So after the Terminator covers had been out for a little while, it was pretty evident that the 4.6 liters do really well with boost, especially with the Roots style or twin screw superchargers. A lot of people were doing Eaton swaps on the Mach 1s and the 99 and 01 Cobras, but the two valve GT Mustangs didn't really have a good Roots style supercharger setup. Kenny Bell had a kit which was really good um, but there just wasn't a whole lot out there because the two valve um, Mustangs are known to only handle about 450 horse before they start breaking rods and it's the same for the Mach 1's but anyway as time went on and the, the GT's became a little more affordable people were more likely to buy them and mod them and a company called Torque Tech decided to develop a supercharger kit that was able to take the stock supercharger or any supercharger that would work with the 0304 Cobra and run it on a two valve Mustang, a GT or a Bullet, with the lower intake manifold being the main part that's different that lines up so that the supercharger can bolt on. This picture was one of the first pictures I ever saw of the Torque Tech kit. I had seen it in 5.0 Mustang magazine, and I thought it was really cool that they were able to start putting these superchargers on two valve GTs. The cool thing, too, about this is there are a large amount of stock Eaton superchargers on the market. So there's lots of uh, potential buys for good deals to get a kit like this up and running on a two valve. And so now that my bullet was all up and running with the new forged rotating assembly, comp cams, ported heads, everything, I decided that I'd like to go supercharged with it and I wanted to go this route. Now something to think about though is this kit was expensive. It was going to be about five or six thousand dollars when it's all said and done. And uh, Danny Johnson had said to me, if you're going to spend five or six grand, you might as well have put that towards a Terminator and get another car, get something beautiful, low mileage, and nice. And so I had just bought my Cobra under that idea, but I still wanted to supercharge the bullet. I just needed to find an affordable way to make it happen. So, unknown to me, in Phoenix during this time, there was a True Blue 03 GT. Very beautiful car, IUP package, awesome looking car and the owner had just installed a Torque Tech kit on it and he had been doing all this you know while I was doing all my stuff and um, he paid a lot of money for the, sh the kit he paid a lot to have it installed he paid to have the car dyno tuned it put down about 410 at the wheels had long tubes flow masters and the supercharger kit and intake and it was really cool because he had a video on YouTube of the car running through the gears and um, he knew a lot about it and he was probably one of the first people uh, to do it and you could see that there were a lot of comments and views on his YouTube channel and so I started talking to him and asking him some questions and he was really nice he seemed like he knew a lot about it and he ended up deciding to move on and get it into road racing and he wanted to change the setup so he sold that GT to another kid so I was searching on Craigslist for torque tech kits I thought maybe I could pick up a used one or something and I found an ad for his GT that this new kid had owned and the, the new owner had repainted it kind of a darker color I liked the true blue I wish he never would have done that but he painted a darker color with more purple in it he took the spoiler off he added the uh, starfish GT wheels and got rid of the bullet wheels and so he had the car on Craigslist and I talked to him about buying it and he didn't really want to negotiate very much with it and that was fine so a few months went by and then I noticed that he had the car for sale again but he had a huge drop in the price he said he's got to sell it and that it's broken so I messaged him I said well what'd you break and he's like um well the boost doesn't kick in anymore which made me laugh because with a supercharger with a belt driven one like this it's the the boost is instant there's no kicking in like a turbo or anything and so I found out that the lower pulley for the Torque Tech kit had broken off and so it was running on just the engine belt instead of the dual belt setup. So 
I talked to the guy who owned the car before and asked him about it, and he said, wow, that thing must be running through the through the uh, bypass valve only. So he was like, that car probably doesn't have enough power to get out of its own way. And sure enough, um, it did need, it, the car ran, but it, it didn't really have much power. It was trying to breathe through the supercharger without using the supercharger. So I made him a deal that he couldn't pass up. He wanted to get rid of the car. He didn't have money to fix it. And he also couldn't travel out of state because of a parole issue. So he gave me a little bit more money off to meet him in Phoenix, which was about an 8 or 10 hour drive. I remember doing all this negotiation over the phone. I was texting and talking to the guy while I was at Walmart shopping with my wife. And we had traveled to this Walmart that we like to go to that's a little bit out of town, just trying to have a nice day. We had taken the Mach 1 out there for a nice drive. Even though I was real tired from working a night job, I said to my wife, I think I'm going to go to Phoenix tonight with some friends and go get that car. So my brother and my friend and I got in Tahoe. We got some tools. We drove down there. We were thinking we might have to tow the car. We weren't sure, so we might have to rent a trailer. We didn't know what we were getting into. And we got down there, and we noticed the guy had cut the exhaust off right after the headers because he wanted to change the clutch. And so it was basically open headers the whole way home. The O2 sensors were just dragging on the ground, and the car was a little low on oil. So we addressed all those issues. We tied the exhaust together with, with some straps. We got the car running. I, I test drove it around the block. I noticed that it, it could still drive pretty well. The clutch had a little bit of chatter to it and stuff, but it was all right. It had a set of really ugly halo headlights in it that were not wired up right, so the blinkers didn't work. And so we had to stuff paper towels underneath them too because they were pointed at the ground. And that was the only way to get them to raise up enough to be right for the drive home. And so we uh, ate real quick down there in town and we turned right around and headed back. It was like 12 or 15 hours of driving for the whole trip. And I remember buying a Rockstar energy drink, which I don't usually drink those, but <laughs> wanted to stay awake. And my brother was cool enough to drive the GT back while I took turns driving the Tahoe with my friend because we both were on low amounts of sleep. But we got the car home. It was a real fun adventure. The next morning, I was really excited. Got the car cleaned up. It was in pretty good shape. Um, a little bit dirty, so I cleaned it up and... Uh, like inside the there's a bunch of coins in the cup holder that were stuck in there with soda pop the key was weird it was broken but they had fixed it with like bondo or something but anyway I started taking the car apart um, I got the supercharger off with my friend you know I had documented everything about what I was taking off and how it went on and what wires were tapped into and I got that supercharger I left it in my garage for a little while and I returned that GT to stock and it was a lot of money to to buy all the parts to return that car to stock and take manifold everything little sensors like there's so much little stuff throttle cable a lot of things were different the car had a really nice short shifter in it I took it out and put a stock one back in but then I just switched it back because I enjoyed driving it with it um, I had to buy cold air intake for it because the other system went with a supercharger installed that real nice and and I continue to, to uh, take things out, like on the instrument cluster, get the gauges all taken out. Because all this stuff was going to have to go into the bullet, and I needed to know where it came from and what wires they were tapped into. And I documented everything from the supercharger brackets, power steering, you know, got the gauges out. Some of them didn't work. I had to buy new gauges, but it was nice to see how it was all tapped into and, and run. So anyway, I got the car cleaned up, and change the oil and that was a nightmare this oil filter I had to crush it with these huge pliers it took me hours to get that thing off even though it was one of those K&N ones with the bolt fitting on the back it wouldn't work at all it was on there tight and I'm pretty sure that the other owner of the car is the one who put that in so the guy probably never changed the oil and like I said the exhaust was cut off and so I took it to a really nice shop here in town that welds and does exhaust work and I had new piping welded in back to the Flowmasters and once I had the car running I noticed it had a misfire and it wasn't a quill packet I changed the plugs I changed everything and I went through all the sensors 
and it turned out being something that I had come across before with my friend where the O2 sensors were swapped on the wrong banks and that was causing the car to kind of go into a limp mode at the higher RPM. But it took forever to get that figured out and I remember doing in this picture here, I remember rolling around on the cold cement underneath changing the crank position sensor and everything and I ended up catching a cold because of it. I was out there in a short sleeve shirt and you know, I thought I'd only take half an hour, but it ended up taking all night and the next thing I know I woke up with a cold. I got the car running right and I continued to take things off like the boost a pump in the back for the fuel system you know extra wiring and things that was just everywhere and this thing right here the EGR pipe <clears throat> took a long time getting a stock one and getting it bolted up to the long tubes just right like I said it was a long job and it took a lot of parts to, to return it to stock it cost a lot of money to return it to stock and so I didn't really care because I was getting a pretty good deal out of this and like the other cars I've had in the past I knew I could sell it and get my money back but here's a video clip of the car running good So as you can see it ran really good, it was back to stock, I had a programmer and I could change the uh, tune back to stock on it. It had these really ugly halo lights in it and I changed those out for some stock ones and then I just really enjoyed owning the car for a little while. I enjoyed driving it to work, I enjoyed driving it with friends going out places and here's a little video clip of, uh, of the car revving up with the Flowmasters. <laughs> great shape. The paint was pretty good for a new paint job. These are some cool pictures I had of it as I was driving it. Some of the pictures I used when I had it listed for sale. And it was just a really fun car. I was really happy to have it. Um, you can see the long tubes in this picture and you know the seats and everything. It's in pretty good shape. I ended up selling the car to a kid who really wanted it and he got it for an amazing price too. I gave it to him for a good deal and he had it for a little while and I think he was out doing donuts or something or not taking care of it very good and he ended up getting a rod knock with it and listed it for sale and someone else bought it and they put a new engine in it and you can see in these pictures this is what it looks like now I've seen it for sale and the bumper scuffed up and you know it's not in very good shape from when I had it even and that wasn't even very long ago but the car is still running and it's on the road. But anyway, I thought this was a cool story. It was a fun car to own. And uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you subscribe and share these videos. And I'm going to be making a lot more of them of all these cars that I've owned and had contact with.